There's another soul that's here that they keep telling me that, that um, there was questions over murder here. Who was that to you? My uncle. He's also here. And he was like a father to you here in this world when I'm connecting with him because he's like, he came in and he pushed like your boyfriend out of the way and he's like, I gotta speak right now. <laughs> Hi, Bianca, how are you? Hi. First of all, where are you from? From Madera, California. <laughs> There's a couple different souls that are coming through, but right away, I have this soul that's stepping forward that passed accidentally. Is it a guy? A guy, a man. He was my ex-boyfriend. Hold on. Why is it, you have so much tragedy that's around you. So many people died like in tragic ways when I'm connecting with you. And there's another soul that's also, here. I'm trying, what happens is when you see me close my eyes, that means I'm trying to make another soul stop talking. That's, that's what that is. <laughs> so I try to push the other souls away and make them stop talking to me so I can focus on one. There's another soul that's here that they keep telling me that, that um, there was questions over murder here or being killed. Who was that to you? My uncle. He's also here. And he was like a father to you here in this world when I'm connecting with him because he's like, he came in and he pushed like your boyfriend out of the way and he's like, I gotta speak right now. <laughs> and then right away I'm connecting. I'm like, what happened to you? And he's telling me that I was killed. I was killed, he's telling me. And what's also so crazy about this is that this was like a big mess when I'm connecting with him. Oh. I haven't had a reading like this. I don't even know. I don't, I can't, like, make, I can't make heads or tails of this. Woo. All right, we're gonna see, we're gonna see how, how this goes here. Was there a murder for hire? Did somebody hire him to be killed? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I thought that's what it was because I see somebody getting paid off and then I see him getting killed. So somebody paid to have your uncle killed here in the physical world. Yes. Being a medium is like being a detective and trying to put together all the pieces. And your uncle is overwhelming me right now, trying to show me what had happened. And I'm asking him, why did you die? Why did you die? And he tells me that he knew too much. And right away when I'm connecting with him, he showed me a, an underground, like at this underground string of illegal activities that were going on. And he tells me that they were friends of his and people that he thought were family members. They really weren't biological mm -hmm. family members, but he called them his family that were involved in all these string of activities. I saw police cars, which means to me that the police started to come on to what was going on. Yeah. He started to die. Mm -hmm. And one of those people was your uncle. Mm -hmm. Cause he keeps saying to me, I can't believe they did this to me. I can't believe that they did this to me. And he tells me that, that your family was fighting to find justice for what had happened. And the saddest part is, is you all know who killed him. Yeah, we do. And he shows me that the two, that, that your family has been fighting to get this person behind bars. But there was an issue with evidence here, he's telling mm -hmm. me. He says to me that the one thing that he wants to thank you for is the bracelets that were made in memory of him. So you all had bracelets that you wore after his passing? We had necklaces and then um, my mom, I believe um, my mom and his sisters had also the bracelets. And how do you connect with the doves? He just showed me doves. They had it on the, on his, um, on the necklaces that they had. Oh, they had the doves on the jewelry. Know that that's his way of acknowledging that because he says to me, Matt, I see everything that was done. And for some reason he's showing me was, I don't know if he died on the street corner or what it is, but I see everybody on the street corner. And I see candles. He showed me, he showed me his spirit visiting the street corner and there's candles that are laid out. And I see that there's rosary beads and I see that there's pictures of him. So he died on that street corner. Yeah. No, it's his way of letting you know that his soul is not trapped there, that his soul did make it to heaven. He says, and Matt, he goes, there's one thing that I regret. He says, I regret not coming back home because his family had said to him, listen, this is not good. These people are not for you. These people are, got, you know, there's, there's bad things that are going on. Your uncle says to me, Matt, I would never have abandoned anybody. That's not who I was. He says, I would never turn my back on anybody. So even though all these things were going down and the police were coming and people were getting arrested and there was these things that had happened, he says he never turned his back on them because he thought that they were his family. Yeah. He says, and instead, Matt, they turned my, their back on me. But he says to me that what he wants you to know is that for him coming through like this, his soul is at peace. He says, and I don't want my family stuck on the day that I died. I want them to know that I, that I appreciate everything that they did, but I am free and my soul is watching over all of them. He says, so thank you for every single thing that you've done for me. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the way that you watched over me. He says, and the way that you would lay things down in my memory. And there's one other thing that he's acknowledging. He wants to thank you all for taking care of his mother. So he says to me, the one thing that he was so concerned about was his mom here in this world. Mm -hmm. And his mother passed because he talks about him being there to greet his mother in spirit. 
And he says to me, Matt, I feel like I'm going to cry over this. I don't get emotional <laughs> over things, but I, sometimes, you, sometimes you just can't help it. He says to me that his mom died of a broken heart. He shows me his mother being in a chair. And every day I see her with rosary beads, praying for her son, praying for her son. He says, and Matt, I couldn't watch my mom suffer anymore. So when she got sick, he wants to let you know that his soul came to get her and to bring her back home. He says, but in the meantime, he goes, I know what you all did for her. Thank you for trying to make her happy. Thank you for remembering me and letting her see the love that you all had for me. We're together, he's saying, because he's going, we're together, we're together. He says, know that we're watching over the family now. Thank you so much. I got to tell you one last thing. I'm not done. There's also a baby that's here that he showed me past. So did you have the miscarriage here in this world? Because he just said to me, he goes, Matt, can you just let her know that I have that soul in heaven? So know that that baby that you lost is a, as a guardian angel with your family watching over you every single day. Thank you. He says, so know that you're never alone. Every challenge that you go through, every struggle that you go, go through, your family is there. They're watching over you. They love you. And they're hoping that this message will help the whole family heal after all of these years.